Hey there. Good morning. Good morning, beautiful sisters of mine. Pray you guys are doing well on today. Hello, 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 hello. Hey, ladies. I felt led to get on here today. I felt led to go live this morning. God, he blessed us while we were in Jessup. And I wanted to get on here and share and talk about what God did. And also share a word with you that God placed on my heart. I shared this at the recovery center on Saturday. And I wanted to get on here and share with you what God did and what God spoke. I believe it's going to bless you. And so I thank you guys for your prayers. Uh, we went to Jessup, Georgia. And... Um, I got a chance to share with some ladies there. Hey, my sisters, I pray you guys are doing well this morning. I wanted to get on here and share uh, a quick word that God gave me to share with the uh, ladies at, at Jessup. And so I pray you guys are doing well. I, um, when I got there, this was a recovery center. Um, the name of it is Shane's Crib. And our sister, Lindsay, she actually prayed on here. Um, on the Dark K Live, when we, when we were doing the Dark K Live prayer, Lindsay, she came on and she shared on here um, with us and she uh, blessed us through prayer, through prayer. And um, she works for Shane's Crib as one of the staff members there. And so God ordered her steps here to pray with us and then connected us so what so that i could be connected with the recovery center that she works for and so while i was there as soon as i walked in as soon as i walked into that place i sensed the holy spirit and uh i sensed god's presence and um, i sensed a great expectancy while there and um just from the get-go i it was about 15 15 of us i believe and it was beautiful. And God had me uh, pour into them. And they were so hungry. They were so desperate to receive everything that God had to give on that in that in that meeting. And it felt like a Holy Ghost meeting. And um and I was so I was we worshiped together, we sang together, we praised God together. And I just wanted to share this real briefly, and then I'm going to share a word with you that God gave me to share with them. Um, yeah, God blessed. God really blessed. And he, and he touched all of our hearts. One person surrendered their lives to Jesus. Uh, three people rededicated their lives to the Lord. Um, four people received the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the Bible evidence of speaking in other tongues. And... Um, God's presence just filled the place. And so that's how we know, you know, that God is in the building because people's lives are changed. Literally changed. And so I'm, I'm thankful. I give God all the glory for that. Um, I gave out some books. Everyone received a copy of the devotional book. And um, I let them know that I'm going to be back. I'm going to be back. I'm sensing a strong um, pull to disciple women who are in recovery. And, and so I'm going to be back and establish, going to establish some relationships with women in recovery. And so that's what God is doing. And so, but God gave me a word for them and it blessed all of us. It was hot off the press and I shared it with them. And when I shared it with them, they were like, whoa. And when God spoke it through me, I said, whoa, this is, this is all the Lord. He took me to Revelation chapter 12, verse 11. In Revelation chapter 12, verse 11, it says, And they have overcome, conquered him by means of the blood of the Lamb and by the utterance of their testimony or the word of their testimony. Revelation chapter 12, verse 11. God spoke that. And he let me know that we continue to overcome 
we continue to overcome. Sometimes we come out of a situation and we want to leave that thing in our past. We don't want to talk about it. We don't want to bring it up. We don't want to revisit it. We don't want to tell anybody about it. We want to just leave it in the past. The things that God has brought us from, maybe he brought you from a, an abusive marriage, drug addiction, alcohol addiction, mental illness, depression, anxiety, fear, phobias of all kinds, um, relationship issues. Um, maybe God brought you from a really low place. And once he delivers you, you like, man, I'm not I'm not going back there, not even talking about it. I'm not going back there. I don't want to talk about it. I don't it was it was too dark. It was too painful. It's too embarrassing. It's too humiliating. <laughs> and I don't want anyone. I don't want to even revisit that. And what God shared with me is that not only do we overcome, not only do we overcome by the blood of the Lamb. And the word of our testimony. But that word overcome is a continual overcoming. It's a continual conquering. To conquer is to subdue. Is to prevail. Is to, is to, is to prevail over. Conquer. Overcome. Win the victory over. We continue to overcome. By the blood of the Lamb. By our testimony. You may want to be done with it. I'm not going back there. I'm not talking about that anymore. <laughs> I'm not revisiting that. I, I'm leaving that in the past. I'm not talking about my abusive marriage. I'm not talking about what that man did. I'm not talking about where God brought me out of drugs. I'm not talking about how he delivered me from an alternative lifestyle. I'm not talking about how he set me free from alcoholism. I'm not, I'm leaving that in the past. I went through recovery and now that's over. That's over is done. I'm not talking about it. He delivered me and I'm going to live my life. But God is going to give you opportunities to testify. What does a witness do? A witness stands, they, they come forward and they say, I saw what that person did. A witness can make or break a case. In a court system, a witness, all you need is somebody, an eyewitness that can attest to the crime. That's all you need to put that person away for life. But when, and when it comes to God, all God needs is an eyewitness that can attest to what he has done. An eyewitness that has experienced for themselves what he can do, his delivering power. And so God is going to bless you with opportunities to stand and testify. To what he can do. I once was here, but now I'm here. I once was addicted to this, and now I am free. God has set me free. I once was enslaved and bound to this. But God delivered me, and he put me on a firm foundation, and now I am free. And I was telling those women in recovery, I was, I was telling them, I said, sometimes we get saved, and we act like we always been saved. We act like we've always been delivered, always full of joy, always singing praise and worship. This is, I came out of my mama's womb praying in tongues. I came out of my mama's womb reading my Bible and quoting scriptures. And we want to forget about all the ugliness and messiness and grit and grime and darkness he brought us from. And then we want to shame people that do talk about it. Girl, why are you telling all that? You don't need to be telling all that. Why are you talking about your past? You are righteous. Well, you weren't always righteous. <laughs> you weren't always redeemed. Where did God bring, bring you from? And so there is no shame. God is removing all shame. And don't he's removing it all because people need to see what God has done. They need to know what God has done for you. 
And he's going to bless you with opportunities to talk about it. And he's going to bless you. And don't you back down. Don't you shrink back in fear. You step into that because that's no longer you. You're testifying because you are a witness to God's power. That's why you're testifying. Not to go back there. You're testifying because you're saying, I'm no longer there. God has saved me. He's delivered me. He's made me over. He's made me new. He's blessed me. He's restored me. He's put me on a firm foundation. He's turned on the light in my life. He's blessed me with a sound mind. I was crazy. But God gave me a sound mind. I was in a dark place, but God picked me up and put me on a firm foundation. And what he's done for me, he will do for you. That's testifying. What he's done for me, he will do for you. So testifying and being a witness. We are witnesses to God's power. We're witnesses to his love. We're witnesses to what having a renewed mind can do. We're witnesses to what God's delivering power can do. We're witnesses to his comfort and his, and his touch. And when we testify, it helps people get free. And it helps us stay free. And so he says, you will continue to overcome. We will continue to overcome. I want us to continue. Not just be delivered and overcome once and then go back no we will continue that's a continual overcoming a continual conquering anything we keep in the dark the enemy can come and bring that thing right back and so we have to keep the enemy on blast we got to continue to walk in the light walk in the day talk about what god has done proclaim his goodness proclaim his wonderful works you keep stuff in the dark that enemy can bring it right back stronger and worse so you proclaim and you talk about what god did and i know it can sound that can sound interesting right you could think that man talking about it sounds like talking about it can make me fall back into it i'm trying to forget about it no god is going to bless you with opportunities listen god is going to bless you with opportunities and you're going to know it's him and he's going to say I, I need you to testify right now I need you to testify. I need you to talk about what I did. Where did I bring you from? And it may be to a group of women. It may be to your, a family member. It may be to someone on your job. God's going to have you testify. You may need to write a book about it. Who knows? But God wants you to testify. Because it's going to help you stay free. That's the, that's the bottom line. It's going to help you stay free. Some of you, I know, you don't want to go back. You don't want to go back to that. But God says, I need you to testify because it's going to help you stay free. It's going to help you stay delivered. It's going to help you continue to overcome and conquer and be victorious over that thing. And he's, remo he's removing all shame. When shame tries to come on you, or when someone tries to make you feel like, oh, you dealt with that. Oh, you experienced that. Oh, you uh, you're like, hey, I, and you and you resist the temptation to feel ashamed because you're giving glory to God because you're not that person anymore, and you know you're not that person anymore, and you know you're not in that place anymore. There's no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. And so you're not that woman anymore, but God wants you to talk about it because it's going to help you stay free. When I told those ladies about the, my testimony, about my, my father, my stepfather, my, my, my life, and I shared with them about my low point with depression, they looked at me like, whoa, really? <laughs> And I said, that's the power of testimony because you see God's glory on somebody right in front of you, but you hear about what God delivered them from. And, and God removes all of the shame and he puts you on. He really do robe you. He really do robe you in a robe of righteousness. He really do 
take you in and love on you and, and adorn you and change you and transform you. Even your countenance change. You have a bright countenance now. He transforms your life completely. Really, he really does. To where you don't even look. You don't come out smelling like smoke. You don't look like you've ever been through the fire at all. God's glory is so over you. His anointing is all over you. His light, his love. You just look like a very loved daughter. A very loved daughter of God. And when you talk about it, people say, what? What? You went through that in your marriage? You went through that in your family? You went through that addiction? What? You were raped? What? How are you still standing? How are you still here? You lost your husband. You lost your children. You lost your mother all in the same year. And you're still smiling? You're still here? You're a cancer survivor? What? Praise God. God delivered you from a lesbian lifestyle? Whoa. You're married with children now? Walking in ministry? Walking in blessings? Whoa. Look at God on your life. Look at God. Look at God. Man. And they will, and people will, they will stand back and be amazed. They will be amazed. They'll say, wow. Wow. Your husband did that to you? He physically abused you? Wow. You were in a mental, in, mental institution? Look at God's glory on your life. Praise God. And they will be amazed. It will help set people free. And it will help you stay free. Like I told those ladies just uh, on Saturday. I'm not ashamed of my testimony. I'm not ashamed of where God, where God brought me from. I'm not ashamed because I know it's the power of God. The gospel is the power of God unto salvation. When we share the good news, it's good news. What God has done is good news. His love for us is good news. His truth is good news. Jesus coming and dying, raising from the dead because he so loves us. Our experiences with God's love, our experiences with God's grace, our experience with his Holy Spirit power is good news. And we are commissioned by God to talk about it. When we refuse to witness, when we refuse to testify, it's like somebody signing up to say, okay, I'll say what God has done. I will stand and say in front of all the people how God has delivered me. I will stand and talk about what I saw him do. And then it's like, it's like not showing up for your court date. Not showing up. And they say, okay, we have an eyewitness. We have an eyewitness that said that they're going to testify of God's delivering power. They said they were going to show up at 8 o'clock on today. And then it's like everybody waiting, but you don't show up. You don't show up for whatever reason. And how would we feel if somebody didn't show up when they said they were going to show up and they didn't testify? We would say, what, what happened? What happened? They were a key witness. You are a key witness in the kingdom of God. You are a key witness against the kingdom of darkness. God needs your testimony. He needs you to show up. He needs you to show up. It releases his power in ways that you have no idea. And you may say, well, I don't have a testimony like that. I've never been addicted to drugs. I've never been on alcohol. I've never been, you know, hooked on, on any substance. I've never come through a dysfunctional situation. I've never been in an abusive marriage. I don't have a testimony. 
But God has not done anything dramatic and drastic. You may say, I don't have all of that to talk about. So how can I be a witness? Maybe you're like that. You still have a testimony. God redeemed your life from destruction. You were headed down a destructive path. And God picked you up. He's transformed your life. You surrendered your life to Jesus. He completely rerouted you. And so you testified to the fact that God delivered you and he saved your soul. You thought, maybe you thought your good works could get you into heaven. You thought being good, that's a testimony. You were, too, you were so impressed with yourself, so impressed with your own self-righteousness. Your own self-righteousness. If you had a, a strong spirit of religion, you can testify. God delivered you from something. Delivered you from pride. Maybe he delivered you from fear. Made you bold. Made you courageous. That's a testimony. And it's powerful. Just because you weren't addicted to drugs and substance and alcohol doesn't make your testimony any less powerful. You know, say we overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our dramatic and desperate and dark testimonies. Only the dark testimonies are powerful against the enemy. Only the dark and real crazy and real very wicked testimonies can cause people to be set free. He didn't say that. Every testimony is powerful. And you are an effective witness. You are a key witness. You are a key witness. Praise God. And you will continue to overcome. I declare in Jesus name. We will continue to overcome. In Jesus name. We live an overcoming life. I declare in Jesus name. When I share my testimony with those ladies. I let them know I've never been hooked on drugs. I've never been on alcohol. I've never, that's never been my thing. And I share with them about my family situation and what I, my upbringing. And my testimony was powerful enough to help some women, to encourage some ladies. And so your testimony, you can go into places that you've never been incarcerated, but you can go and share your, the love of Jesus in prison cells. You, you may have never been on drugs, but you can go to a recovery center and talk about what God did for you. You may have never been in a domestic violence situation, but you can go to a domestic violence center and organization and talk about the goodness of God, the love of God, the power of God that he did for you. And it will release the power of God in a way that you've never experienced before. Praise God. You can go into places. You don't have to go through what people go through in order to be effective. You can talk about the love of God. Praise God. Praise God. I'm so thankful. I'm so thankful for God, God's power and his grace. I just wanted to get on here. That's it. I just wanted to get on here and share that with you ladies. And I, I pray in the name of Jesus that God helps us be bold and courageous, especially in this time right now that we're living in. Um, my sisters, the, the, the harvest is ripe, is, is ready. People are desperate. These times that we're living in, people are getting tired of life as they have experienced it. And they are wanting to hear about Jesus. They really do. They are desperate. There was this lady at that recovery center. I, I, she had such a hunger in her eyes. She had such a, a thirst and desperation. And so when we asked anybody want to be saved, she was already she already knew the Lord. But I say, anybody, we don't want to take for granted that everyone in here is right with God. And so does anyone want to recommit their lives to Jesus? Does anyone want to just, just recommit? And she raised her hand, her hand shot up. We prayed a prayer and she got back in fellowship with God and reconnected with him. 
Then I said, does anyone want to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the Bible evidence of speaking in other tongues? Does anyone want that language? She said, I do. <laughs> she said, I do. Bring it. Give it to me. And I, and I looked at it. I just smiled. I said, you want everything. She said, I want it all. You know, she has such a hunger, such a hunger. And she received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. She spoke. She heard herself speak. And the uh, Holy Spirit filled the place. He came through and he filled the place. And uh, he said, you know, when you're thirsty and hungry for me, I will fill you. I will fill you. And so God, he is moving and we got to get in on his move. All right. No more standing on the sidelines, watching everybody else enjoy this, 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 this revival that's taking place right now. Watching God move by his spirit. No more just standing on the sidelines wondering if you really are called, if you really are chosen. Do you really got it? Do, are you really anointed? Do you really know enough scripture? And some of us just standing on the sidelines. You just stand on I don't know what you're waiting for. What are you waiting for? You know, you're standing on the sidelines wondering, just wondering. Do I really, do I really know it? <laughs> Do I really have it? And you're just, you're just standing there. But God is moving. He is moving. And we got to get in on his move. We got to get in on his move. You have the anointing of God resting on your life. You have, you have a relationship with God. You have a testimony. Even if you know just a few scriptures, that's enough to be effective. If you know God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, John 3, 16, get that in your heart. Get that in your heart. You don't have to know the whole Bible. And God says you are a chosen generation. You are a royal priesthood. You are, you are a holy nation. You are chosen. You are called by God. You do have what it takes to be effective. Praise God. He says, sin. God says, Jesus told his disciples, he said, pray that God send laborers. You are somebody's salvation testimony. They're going to say, I walked past. I met with Alma. I, I ran into Marsha at the grocery store. I ran into Sal. I ran into Pamela. Man, I, I ran into Ladeen at the, at the, at the office. And she asked me if I knew the Lord. They're gonna, you're, you're somebody's salvation testimony. You're somebody's testimony of what God can do. You're in somebody's story. You're a part of somebody's in, initiation and, and invitation to receive a, a powerful, loving relationship with God. You're in somebody's journey, testimony, and story. You're a part of that. And so get off the sidelines. Get off the, your back is against the wall. Just get off the wall. And God is going to take care of all your finances, all your kids, all your health, all your stuff as you, as you go and be a blessing. God is going to bless you with things that you didn't ask for. He's going to bless you with the desires of your heart. And you may say, well, I got to get this figured out before I can go and do that. No, that's not how it works. You go and be a blessing, and God will take care of all of that. He'll take care of your mortgage. He'll pay off your debts. He'll help you. He'll, he'll, he'll send increase your way. And you can't wait to go and do what you've been commissioned to do. He said, go, go, go to all the world. Go. He said, I will handle everything. I will provide supernaturally for you. I will handle it all. You go and do the work. Up in evangelist, the Bible says, in season, out of season. Share what you do know. You don't know the whole Bible? Good. That, that'll give you, the more you go, the more you get in the room with women that are asking you, and the more you get around people that are asking you questions about, okay, so so who is Jesus, and, and what happened <laughs> on the cross? And the more you get around those type of questions, the more you're going to want to study. 
You're going to want to study. You're going to want somebody. And the more people challenge you and, and ask you questions, you're going to say, okay, let me get in this Bible. <laughs> Not let me get in this Bible so that I, and then I can go. No, while I'm going and while I'm talking to people, okay, I'm studying. I'm coming back and I'm studying. And if you don't know the answer to something, you can say, hey, I don't know that, but I'm going to find out. I'm going to find out and I'll be back. And we're going to talk about it. And so God is getting us excited about evangelism. He says the knowledge of the Lord will cover the earth as the waters cover the sea. And maybe your family don't want to know anything about the Lord right now. Maybe people on your job don't want to hear it. Maybe you go some places and they, and they turn their backs and they say, don't you come in here with all that Jesus stuff. You know what you do? You go to people, you go to places that do want to hear it. You shake the dust. What did, what did Jesus do when, when places didn't want him to come in and, and, and heal and do anything? He shook the dust off his feet. If they don't want to hear you, you go somewhere that do want to hear you. And I tell you some places that are desperate to receive the good news, prisons, recovery centers. They are desperate to hear about Jesus. Hospitals. I know with COVID and everything, you can't really go into hospitals right now and do what we, we used to be able to go to hospitals and lay hands on everybody and pray over everybody. But I know with COVID and everything, you can't do that. But there are some places where you can go and people are hungry. They are hungry. And you're the right woman for the job. When you get there, when you get in those places, you, you go to, you get, when you, when you're, when you, before you step in, you just, you just say, Father, I receive your grace. I receive your grace to be a blessing today. I receive your help, the help of your Holy Spirit to encourage these ladies and to share your good news with these ladies. And it could be a short prayer. And then you go in there and you just share. We had a Holy Ghost meeting. It felt like a revival in that place on Saturday. God wants to use us. He really do wants to use us in this day and time. Get off the wall. Stop. Get off the wall and dive in and get in with his move. Holy Spirit is moving right now. He really is moving. Get in with what God is doing right now. You are equipped. He doesn't call the equipped. He equips the called. You are called by God. You are chosen by God. You are equipped by God. And I know by the Spirit, I'm talking to somebody who's been on the wall. You've been standing on the sidelines, looking at everybody else, doing things, doing works, doing works for God, and going places, and 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 you've just been on the sidelines. You've just been standing on the sidelines. It's like on the side of a pool. You're right. You're not in the water. You don't even got your feet in the water. You just on the wall and you're like, I don't know if I got it. I don't know if I can do that. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not Keisha. I'm not this evangelist. I'm not this preacher over here. I don't know if I can do that. And so you and so maybe you've made your ministry praying for the preachers and praying for the leaders and praying for them while you stand on the wall. Yeah, I'm glad you're praying for me, but I want you to join me. <laughs> Thank you for your prayers. <laughs> I appreciate it. But whether you pray for me or not, it ain't going to stop this mission. Jesus is interceding for me. He is interceding for me constantly, praying for me. So whether people pray for me or not, whether you pray for me or not, I'm still going to do what God called me to do. And I'm going to be okay with or without people's prayers. I appreciate it. But Jesus is interceding for us. Praise God. And you are anointed and you are empowered by God and you have his Holy Spirit and you have God himself, the creator of all heaven and earth, dwelling and living on the inside of you. The same God that said, let there be light. 
lives in you, in your spirit, wanting to come out, wanting to express himself through you. But if you stand on the sidelines, no one will be able to hear the message that he gave you to say. There's a way he gave you to say it. There's a way he gave you to do it. You are his expression in the earth. And if you shut down and say, no, I'm not, I'm not, I can't. You cause every person that was destined to receive Jesus from you, every person that was destined to be reached by you, you cause them, you delay, you delay the relationship with God that you're going to help create. You delay that. There are some people that you were destined to reach. And you will reach them, I pray in Jesus' name. Every single person. God is going to continue to bless you with deliverance. And when he bless you with deliverance, you talk about what he did. You help set some people free. Glory to God. Off the side, off the side of the wall. And get in, get jump in, jump in to what God is doing. Praise God. God is gonna use you powerfully. I want you on the front line. Front line. You are front line. Praise God. You are Prince's warrior. Praise God. He's gonna teach you how to use his word. He's gonna teach you how to pray as you go. As you go, God is going to, Holy Spirit is going to help you learn how to do this. Praise God. You're going to gain more wisdom. You're going to gain more strength and more power. I told my husband, God, I have never been used by God the way he used me on Saturday. That was some next level. That was some all Holy Ghost. That it, it, I was prophesying. I prophesied. He used me to prophesy over every single one of them. I've been desiring to prophesy more. And I said, Lord, I want you to use me. The Bible talks about to desire. If you're going to desire any gift, desire to prophesy. And I said, Father, I desire that. I desire that gift. Because that lets people know that you really do hear them. Because you can, you can, you can say things to somebody, but they didn't say, how did you know that? And you can say, it was all Holy Ghost. And so I've been telling God, I desire to prophesy because that really does cause you to be glorified even more. When people hear things in their hearts and conversations in their heart being spoken by somebody that, that don't know them. I said, Lord, use me to prophesy. I know I prophesy through devotionals, but Lord, use me more spoken and more spoken prophecies, more words of wisdom, more word of knowledge. I want to just do more of the gifts. And I want God to use me more. And so I've been praying that. I've been desiring that. And God will, God bless me with the opportunity. And so I, I, and so when I got done prophesying over, over all the women and praying with all the women and they're, and they crying, they crying and they're on their knees and they're crying out to God and they're thanking God for speaking to them. Then the founder, Pastor Cheryl, she said, Hey, hey, I'm not letting you go until you pray for me too. <laughs> And God used me to speak a word over her that blessed her. And so it was a Holy Ghost meeting. And I know, I know we're not seeing a whole lot of that today. We're seeing we get in church and we get out. We're not seeing a whole lot of revivals. We're not seeing a whole lot of Holy Ghost meetings. We're not, we're not seeing a whole lot of that. But I'm telling you, that's the day we're living in. And that's what God is about to do. We're about to see a revival. We're about to see, we're about to see a great awakening. We're about to see some, some people that's been sleeping. They're about to awaken to the things of God. And they're about to come alive and come awake. And we're about to see some sleeping giants become awake. Glory to God. We're seeing a revival of God's church like we've never seen it before. And we're going to see his power in great demonstration. We're going to see miracles. We're going to see signs. We're going to see wonders. I'm thankful for all the motivational preaching that we've been seeing across the, the past two decades. But we're going to see more power. We're going to see more power. Thank God for encouraging words. But we're going to see more demonstrations of God's power 
and what only he can do. Praise God. We're going to see that. It's going to be like a revisit to Azusa Street. You read about Azusa Street? People with, with missing limbs. The limbs grew back supernaturally under the power of God. We're going to see more miraculous healings by the power of God. We're going to see that. That's the time we're living in because people are desperate to see God's glory. They want to see God show up for real, for real. God is touching leaders' hearts. He's reviving his people. And we're going to have to get in. We get in or we get left behind. Jump in. And say, Father, I don't know a whole lot. I know you're still training me. I'm still a, I'm still a believer in training. We all are in training. You can say, Father, I don't know, I don't know a whole lot, but I'm going to let you speak through me. God will give you a word. He'll give you, there's so much that God has shown me that I had, that I, that I found in scripture later on. He showed it to me before I knew there was a verse for it. He will reveal it to me and then months or years will go by. And I'll be reading the Bible and i say, oh man, God showed me that. <laughs> and that's what he'll do. That's what he'll do. He'll reveal things to you supernaturally. Give you divine insight, quick insight, spirit of spirit of counsel, spirit of insight. You'll know things by the spirit. You'll know things. But that happens. You don't have to be a, a pastor in order to experience that. You don't have to be a preacher, so quote unquote. You don't have to be a teacher, an apostle to be used mightily by God. All you have to do, the only qualification. Is your yes. Is your yes. That's your only qualification. And you say yes to God and God will cause people. You say yes to God and open a recovery center. If God is you wanting you to open something, some type of organization. And you may say, Father, I don't have it. I don't, I don't have. I just have a love for women in recovery. But I don't know enough. God says, I will give you the wisdom that you need. I will show you. I will order yourselves. I will connect you to the right people. And you, and you just do the first part. And God will send somebody else to do what you, what you're not gifted to do. You'll partner up with other gifts in the body of Christ. You don't have to be everything and know everything. You will partner up. I partnered up with Pastor Cheryl on Saturday, the founder of that recovery minister. We were partners. Praise God. We were partners in ministry. Glory to God. And we blessed those girls. And we all were blessed. And so God will use you to start something. He'll use you to, to put it together. And then he'll connect you with the right person to come in to do their gift. And then another person will come in with their gifting. And everybody will be blessed. But you have what it takes. So no more asking God, are you really chosen? Are you really called? Are you really called? But Because all that do is waste time. It wastes time. Am I really called? Am I really chosen? Am I really anointed? Do I really got it? Am I really forgiven? Am I really saved? You surrendered your life to Jesus 12 years ago and you're wondering, are you saved? Yes, you're saved. <laughs> You're saved. You know the Lord. You cried out to God and received him in your heart. You don't have to ask that anymore. You are saved. You have a relationship with the Lord. And the enemy uses that to stall you. So you can't go forward. You're saved. If you, if you surrendered your life to Jesus, if you repented and, and turned to God, you have, a, you have a relationship with God. You are called. You are chosen. The Bible says, how do you know you're chosen? Because you feel chosen? No. How do you know you're chosen? The Bible tells us that we are. You are a chosen generation. There you go. I'm chosen. Well, I don't feel chosen. God calls you chosen. Am I righteous? Am I really righteous? The Bible says you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Whether you feel like it or not. Whether it looks like it or not. 
And so all these questionings is just causing you to stall and it's causing you to waste time. So no more all the questionings. Okay. Just lay, you know, say, just, just say, I believe by faith that I am called by God. I believe Lord that you have chosen me. I believe that I have your Holy Spirit living on the inside of me. I believe that I have your spirit of truth. I have your spirit of truth living on the inside of me. I have power, dunamis, dynamite, explosive ability in me. I have what it takes to be an effective witness in this earth. And you got to wake up in the morning, look yourself in the mirror, and you say, I have what it takes to be an effective witness on my job. I have what it takes to be an effective witness in my family. I have what it takes because of Jesus, because of my father and my relationship with the Lord, and because of his, his power in me and his power resting on me, I have what it takes to be an effective witness in this earth. You have what it takes. You already got it. You're not trying to get it. You're not trying to get more anointing before you can be an explosive blessing. You already have as much anointing as you, as you will get. It's just you yielding to that. And the more you yield... And the more you, it's like the, the anointing and operating in God's power. It's like a muscle. You get stronger in it. The Bible talks about being strong in the grace. The more grace you operate in, the more stronger the grace will be on your life. You, are, are, you already have as much anointing as you will ever have. Just like God won't love you any more tomorrow than he loves you right now. He already loves you as much as he will ever love you. But we don't receive all his love sometimes. And so we go lacking. It's how much we're willing to receive. It's how much we're willing to operate in. It's how much we're willing to, to develop in. And so we can, we can grow in God's grace. We can grow in his in, in, increase in our ability to flow in God's anointing and his power. Just a little taste of operating in God's power in a way that I've never operated in before on Saturday is making me hungry. Ooh, I'm so hungry. I'm like, Lord, if you can use me in that way, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's a done deal. It's a done deal. And every time you, every time you let God use you, you grow in confidence. It just strengthens your confidence in him even more. And so praise God. So you, with every single experience with him, you're growing, you're growing, you're growing, you're growing. And you say, Father, yeah, Lord, use me more. Use me more. I yield even more. I yield even more. Whatever you want me to do. Yes, Father. You're conf I'm confident now that I don't have to always have a prepared message. God will give me exactly what he wants me to say because I have his Holy Spirit living and residing in me. And he can give me what to say right on the moment, right on the spot. I'm not afraid to not know in advance. I'm not afraid not to know. I don't have to know. Matter of fact, sometimes the more I don't know, the better, the more God uses me. Because it's faith. I believe God loves these women. And he's not going to just let me come here and not give something to them of value. And so you can be confident that God won't just, he won't put you to shame. He won't humiliate you and put you in front of a people and give you nothing to say. And just abandon you. Leave your, leave your hanging. Call you to a place and say, psych, <laughs> God won't do that. That's not his character. And that's not his nature. To put you before a people. And give you an opportunity to, to speak to somebody and leave you hanging. Stand you up. And not give you any word of wisdom, any word that will come for them and bless them. God won't do that. That's not his nature. That's not his character. 
He loves these people too much and he loves you too much. He will not humiliate you like that. And so you can trust. If you don't know what God is wanting you to say, if you, if you don't know what he's wanting you to do, you can trust, Father, when I get there, you're going to show me. Because you love me and you love these people. You're going to show me. It doesn't matter that I don't know anything right now. Maybe you're just wanting me to, to just enjoy this, this time in my relationship with you. And not spend so much time mulling over anything. Because you got, everything he gives you is going to be hot off the press. And so God is going to help us. He's going to help us. He's going to help us. He's going to help us. We got to get involved in what he's doing right now. Praise God. We got to get involved. The more he uses you, the more you're going to grow in confidence. Praise God. I sense that. The more you let God use you, the more you're going to grow in confidence. And he's going to release any, any, any strings that's been holding you back anything that's been holding you back god is cutting those strings and he's releasing you praise god so that you can be free you, can, you will be free to to go and do the works that god has called you to do he is cutting all strings he's cutting everything that's stopped you and hindered you praise god glory to god I sense that. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Well, that's it. That's all God wanted me to share. Praise God. Praise God. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Father God, we come before you in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord God, for your Holy Spirit power that's wanting to operate through us. We we sense, Lord, that we are living in a time right now, Father, of great desperation. People are really wanting you. They really do want you. They want to know you. They're wanting to experience your power. They're wanting to experience your love, your unconditional love. They are really desperately seeking and searching for you, Father. And we pray in the name of Jesus that you will help us yield to you and submit to you and get off of those, off of the sidelines and, and get involved with the move of your Holy Spirit and what you're doing right now. Help us, Father God, to be confident that you really do live in us. We really do live in you. We are your daughters. We have what it takes to be a, a key and effective witness in this earth. We thank you, Lord. We have what it takes. We are called by you. You told us all throughout scripture how you have chosen us, how you have brought us close to you by the blood of Jesus. We were far off, but you brought us near by the blood of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, that you will put an end to all of the questionings, all of the doubt, all of the unbelief in the name of Jesus. We pray that you remove all of that and that you will give us strong confidence in who you are, who we are in you. In the name of Jesus, we pray for confidence in Jesus' name. We pray, Father, for deliverance from fear in the name of Jesus. You help us to receive courage and boldness in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord. Your love has been shed abroad on our hearts by your Holy Spirit. We pray, just as Jesus was moved with compassion, we will be moved with compassion. We will be moved. We will be moved off the sidelines and into this move of your Holy Spirit. We won't have a blind eye to what's going on we will be moved with compassion in the name of Jesus we will be moved to do we will be moved to act we will be moved to go forward we will be moved to step out in the name of Jesus we thank you Lord in Jesus name in Jesus name in Jesus name thank you Lord we pray you settle the issue once and for all who we are Settle it, Father. Our identity in Christ, settle it, Father. Once and for all, 
so we can get moving. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Forgive us for all the time we wasted. Doubting and wondering, do we really have it? Are we really called? Are we really chosen? Are we really anointed? All the questions that has caused us to waste and delay time. We pray in the name of Jesus that you put an end to all of that and you help us get involved, Father. We receive your forgiveness and we receive your love. We receive your grace. I pray for a flood of grace for my sisters in the name of Jesus. I pray for a flood of strength. I pray for a flood of, of, of power. I pray that you anoint them. I pray, Father, for fresh wind, fresh fire in the name of Jesus. Get them excited about souls. Get them excited about people in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Be glorified in my sister's life, Father. In Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord. You have so many people that you've destined for them to reach. And they will reach every person. Every single person person that their lives were destined to reach they will reach them glory to god glory to god you will be glorified in my sister's life in the name of jesus hallelujah hallelujah we thank you lord you will be greatly glorified hallelujah Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you for this moment. Thank you for commissioning, commissioning us to go. And thank you, Lord. We obey your Holy Spirit. Help us to continue to obey you in the name of Jesus. Help us to continue to yield to you, whether we feel strong or not, whether we feel like we got it or not. Help us not to let our feelings determine anything. Help us to receive by faith that we are who you say we are. And we have what you say we have. And we can do everything you say we can do by your grace and by your power. Thank you, Father, that every single word you've spoken over us is true. And everything the devil has said over me and my sisters is a bold lie. And we rebuke and reject every single lie of the enemy in the name of Jesus. And we receive in our hearts and we receive in our lives the truth of your word. Your truth prevails over any lie it outrun and it outlasts any lie from the enemy and so we receive your truth father in the name of jesus i pray you help my sisters to see that they really are who you say they are open their eyes to see themselves the way you see them in the name of jesus you don't see some weak pitiful daughters you see strong powerful daughters you don't see women who are always on the defense hiding you see women who are advancing your kingdom leaning forward moving forward in the name of jesus with their armor on with their shield up with their sword in hand with their truth wrapped around them lord Lord, thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. You see, sisters, Lord, daughters of you, Father, who are advancing, making more forward steps in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We got the enemy on the run. He ain't got us on the run. We got him on the run. Hallelujah. You got us surrounded with your favor. You got us surrounded with your entire angelic army. You are for us and you are on our side. And you got our back, Father. As we armor up and go into this world, Father, we thank you, Lord. We have your anointing. We have your power. We have your word. We have you, Lord. We have your love. In the name of Jesus, we have your compassion. In the name of Jesus, we have gifts, spiritual gifts that you've given us, Father. Use those gifts, Lord, at their maximum ability. In the name of Jesus, we pray that you cause us to be and realize our gifting, our gifting, Lord. Help us to operate, Lord, in the gifts that you've given us. If you call us to prophesy, help us to prophesy. If you put a gift in us to work miracles, help us to work miracles for your glory. If you put in us a gift to heal, Father, and lay hands on the sick, Father, and watch supernatural, miraculous healings take place, help us to flow in those giftings. If you've given us a gift of word of wisdom and word of knowledge, help us to operate in those giftings in the name of Jesus. 
Glory to God. If you've given us a gift, Father God, to, to serve, Father, help us to serve, Lord, as unto you in the name of Jesus. Whatever gift you've given us, glory to God, help us to do it, Lord, as unto you in the name of Jesus. Help us to get busy. Hallelujah. Such a beautiful life. Such a blessed life. Glory to God. And you'll take care of all of my sister's needs. You'll take care of all of them. All of them. Glory to God. You'll take care of it all. Hallelujah. Glory to God. As we get busy doing the works that you created us to do. You say we are your workmanship. Created in Christ Jesus. Unto good works. We are your masterpiece. We are your workmanship. Created in Christ Jesus. Unto, unto good works. Unto good works. Which you created. Which you made a plan beforehand. That we will walk in them. Get us busy walking in these works Lord. And doing these things that you've put in us to do. In the name of Jesus. While we still have time. In the name of Jesus. We're, not, we're only pilgrims here. We're not going to be here forever. On this side. Help us Lord. Time is running out. Get my sisters Lord God. Fired up. And going. And moving. In the name of Jesus. Mobilize your people. In the name of Jesus. Help us Lord. To say yes to you. In the name of Jesus. Help us to keep on saying yes to you. Help us to keep on choosing life. Hallelujah. Glory to God. In Jesus name. Thank you Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you Father. Yes Father. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you Jesus. Thank you Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. 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 God is mobilizing his people. We are really in this end time, right before the return of Jesus. And God is placing people in key positions. Esther, there's, there's a part in the book of Esther, and you can read it, when her uncle comes to her and says, Esther, you got to speak to the king. They're trying to destroy all of the Jewish people. You have to speak to the king. And if you read the book of Esther, Esther was made queen. Not so that she can just enjoy royalty and enjoy that new place. God made her queen for a purpose. And so her uncle came to her and said, you got to do something. And the Bible talks about how Queen Esther was very distressed because in that time, you had to go to the king only if you were summoned. She knew she could lose her life if she stepped before, tried to step before him without being summoned. And her uncle said, you got to do something. Because if God, if you don't speak, God will cause deliverance to come from another place. But he will deliver his people. Her uncle said, he will deliver his people. And he will just raise up somebody from another place if you don't do what you know you need to do. And then he told her, maybe you were born. I believe perhaps you were born for such a time as this. Maybe you, God made you queen for this purpose. You were born for such a time as this. And God has saved you. He's delivered you. He set you on a firm foundation. He has equipped you. He has called you. And he didn't put you in that place for you to forget your assignment. He didn't put you there for you to forget and just enjoy 
the blessed life. No, you're there to help save and redeem and deliver some people. And if you don't say what God is telling you to say, and if you don't go where God is telling you to go, and if you don't do what God is telling you to do, God will raise up deliverance in another place. He'll raise up another woman. He'll raise up somebody else who will say yes to him. Who will say yes and they will do what God created you to do. He will raise up. He has always raised up prophets. Raised up women. People who let God use them in great ways. With their feeble selves. With their weak selves. With their puny and pitiful and poor and broke down and depressed. And, they, and he brought them from that place. So they didn't let their, their, their situation stop them from being used mightily by God. God will raise up somebody. And make them strong and powerful and full and free. And you're going to look back and you say, that could have been me. You don't want that to be the case. You want to say yes to God. You say, Father, I don't want you to have to raise up somebody else. No, no, I'll speak. I'll speak. I'll say whatever you want me to say. I'll do whatever you want me to do. You saved my life, not for me to just eat grapes and just chill and relax. You saved me so that I can go and do a work. That's why you saved me. He says, once you are full, once you are free, once you are satisfied, don't forget God. Don't forget God. Not forgetting God means that you don't forget your assignment. Don't forget why he put you there. Why did he save you? Why did he transform you? Why did he preserve your life when everybody you knew died? Why did he keep you alive? Why did he keep you? He put you where you are for a purpose. He saved your butt for a purpose. Now get busy doing what God has put you here to do. Open your mouth. Open your mouth. Look out on the earth and be moved with compassion. Really see what's going on. See what's going on. And let God move your feet and let him move your heart and let it move you to tears to do something and to act and to respond. If you don't care about anything that's going on, say, Father, help me care. Help me care because right now my heart is so hard and so cold that I don't care. The only person I care about is me. And you can say, Father, I don't like that. I don't like that I let my, my past harden me to where I don't care about nobody and nothing. You can be real with God. You say, Father, help me care. Help me care. Help me care about the lost. Help me care about the broken. Help me care about the abused. Help me care about the lost. Help me care about the broken. Help me care about the poor. Help me care about the needy. Help me care, Father God, about the incarcerated. Help me care, Lord. Help me care. Don't let my heart grow cold. Don't let my heart grow cold. Help me care. And God will answer your prayer. And he will increase your capacity to love. Jesus was moved with compassion and he went. You'll be moved with compassion and you will go. 
whether you got all the money you need for that organization or not. You say, I don't care. God, God put this heart. He put a burden on my heart for these people. And one way or another, he's going to provide. Either he's going to provide the resources or he's going to provide the favor. But all I know is I have a burden for this group of people. And I'm going to go and reach this group of people. And he's going to provide. Because you know he's giving you a burden. He's going to provide supernaturally for you. And he will continue to provide supernaturally for you. But you will go in the name of Jesus. You will go. No more living on defense. God didn't give you an armor for you to go and hide under your shield in some corner. You got your armor up. You got your shield up. But you're in a corner. No, that's not why God gave you that armor. That's not why he gave you that shield. So you can live on the defense. While the enemy plummet you and beat you and tell you who you're not. No, he gave us armor so we can advance, so we can lean in. We can lean in and put the enemy back. We have the enemy like this instead of him having us like this. You hold up the shield. You hold up your, your sword. And you lean in, knowing who you are, knowing what God is, that God is with you and he's for you. And you lean in in power and authority given to you by God. You lean in with your faith and your trust in God. And you move forward. The enemy won't be able to do anything. That's what God is calling us to, a forward, a, a moving forward, a leaning forward. With our armor on, we're leaning forward. And we're moving forward. And we got the enemy on the run. We got him on the run. We live an offensive life. Where we're on the offense. We're not living on the defense, covered up, scared of the devil and scared of people. No, we live on the offense, knowing that I am who God says I am. I have what God says I have, and he's equipped me to do something powerful in this earth, and I'm going to do it by his grace and power. You lean forward into that. Glory to God. That's, where he, that's our stance. We have a forward stance. A forward stance. That's the attitude we have and that's the posture we have. It's forward. Glory to God. Glory to God. You were born for such a time as this. All of us were. I love you, my sisters. I could go on and on. I feel so full. I just feel so full. What a powerful weekend this was. I could really go on and on, but I believe you all receive what God wanted you to receive. I pray you're blessed. I pray you're blessed. I pray you're so richly blessed. With confidence, with peace in your heart and mind. Hallelujah. Love you. Mwah, 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 mwah. God bless you.